Oh, hi. Welcome to the third week of talking about the 90th Annual Academy Awards. By the view count, I'm the only one who cares about it. But who cares? I like talking about it. So this week, we're going to talk about four categories. The documentary categories and the animated categories. These are the ones that are sometimes the hardest to track down. Maybe not so much the animated feature category, but all the other three categories... I had a real rough time trying to even find a copy of most of these films. So you'll see that in a lot of these categories, I may have only seen two of them. However, I still want to discuss them, and hopefully you can shed some insight down in the comments below. So let's just jump right into this. First up, we're going to talk about the documentary short subject. Documentaries are some of my most favorite movies to watch, uh, and yet, I sometimes just don't make the time to actually sit down and watch them. But I always leave learning something new and understanding the world, hopefully, in a bit of a better way. This category, even though I do have copies of some of these films still waiting for me in my queue, I've only seen two of them in this category. So first, let's run down the nominees. Uh, and I'm going to be looking at my computer once again. So we have Edith and Eddie, which is by Laura Chekaway and Thomas Lee Wright. Heaven is a Traffic Jam on the 405 by Frank Stiefel. Heroin, which is spelled heroin like a superhero heroin, but with the E in brackets. That's by Elaine McMillan Sheldon and Karen Sheldon. We have Knife Skills by Thomas Lennon. And we have Traffic Stop by Kate Davis and David Heilbroner. The two that I have seen in this category are Heroin and Knife Skills. So I can tell you a little bit about those two movies. The one called Heroin is actually following around this uh, a couple of people in the small city in West Virginia uh, who are suffering from heroin addiction. So you actually see first responders going to people who are passed out, who are stuck in bathrooms, in, in public restrooms, and just trying to deal with this epidemic. And we meet a couple of people along the way. I have a fondness for this lady who kind of via her, her church group goes around and finds prostitutes to try and go and rehabilitate them. And we have a first responder paramedic who is, you know, just doing her job as best she can, but understanding that she's seen the same people over and over again. And a judge who is trying so hard to clean up these streets by giving fair penalties uh, and, and hopefully pushing people to, to try and get better. I, I, I liked heroin. It was, it was a fine film. Uh, is it one of my favorite documentaries of all time? Maybe not, but I thought it was still an eye-opening look into uh, this epidemic that seems to be sweeping the United States in, in quite a serious way. The other one uh, that I saw was Knife Skills, and this is uh, this restaurant that I'm going to forget where it is, uh, but it's a restaurant in the U.S. that takes... Uh, people who have been in jail. So convicts, av after they've been released, come into this restaurant to learn how to cook French cooking, like traditional French cooking. And this showing the people along the way of trying to make that work, both the owner and the convicts coming in who either really struggle with being in this regular nine to five job or excel at now being given something to do with their lives. So I thought that was a really, really strong, strong film. Having looked at some of the others in this category, uh, I am going to guess that heroin is probably going to be the one that wins this. Oftentimes in these categories, I find that the Academy likes to reward things that are of the moment or that are really talking about a problem that's happening today in society. So heroin, I think, has the best chance of doing that. Uh, the small clips I have seen of Edith and Eddie it looks like a very charming little movie, so they might want to go with something that is just like a fun and feel-good film at the same time, too. But my guess is that it's going to go to heroin. It's on Netflix, if you have Netflix. That's the only one of these I believe that is actually on Netflix and not something like on Vimeo or where you have to go and pay for it. Next up, let's talk about the documentary feature. We have Abacus. 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 Small Enough to Jail, which is by Steve James, Mark, Mick, Mark Mitten, I can talk today, and Julie Goldman. We have Faces Places by Agnes Vera, J.R., and Rosalie Varda. Icarus by Brian Fogel and Dan Kogan. Last Men in Aleppo, Ferris Fayad, Karim Abdid, and Sorlin uh, Jesperson. And then Strong Island by Yance Ford and Jocelyn Barnes. So again, 
in this category. I've only seen two, even though actually there's two of these are also in my queue, ready for me to watch. But owning your own business, you find yourself way busier than you think you should be in a given week. So the two I've seen, number one is Icarus. Icarus is this story of a guy. This is actually my favorite type of documentary uh, in, in many ways, which is that the documentarians started off with this one story in mind that they wanted to do. And then just because they were in the right place at the right moment, it spins into this very different story. So the original concept is like, Super Size Me, if you remember that movie where a guy goes and eats McDonald's for a month and sees what the health effects are. This guy, who is a cyclist, wants to see that if he pumps himself full of drugs, like Lance Armstrong did and, and a lot of other cyclists did, would he be able to actually win a race? And what he wants to do is basically hide the fact that he's doping. So it's a kind of twofold. Does this doping ex make him excel where he's like, you know, not... Uh, in the super echelon of cyclists, but also can he fool the judges enough to to make this work? So then along the way, he discovers this guy in Russia who's going to help him do that. And then that blows up when it's revealed that the Russians, the state, the state is sponsored wide scale doping and hiding that fact for does like decades since probably the late 1960s. And so uh, it, it turns into a very, very different story. It's a fascinating story. I think, in my personal opinion, that there could have been some slight tightening up of this film. I think it runs maybe just a tad too long. But for the first, I would say, 50 minutes of this movie, I was gripped. Like, I was like, I want to know what's going to happen next. I have no idea how this story is going to end. And there's a KGB agents that are uh, involved, and this guy on the run, and, and trying to smuggle somebody out of Russia without the... Uh, authorities knowing like it turned into a very interesting story um, that is still unfolding as the Olympics are playing on right now the other one I watched is Last Men in Aleppo which is a very very strong documentary it is not for everyone though be aware that if you are going to watch this movie this is showing the bombings that were happening in Aleppo Syria where the Russians were there and, and, and Americans were there too but their city is being destroyed around them there's bombs falling in the middle of the night, and these people are trying to make it work. They're still there, left behind in the city that's crumbling around them. And it's very gripping and just sad. We have, again, following around these first responders who are going around and trying to help people as much as they can after these buildings have collapsed and have fallen on top of people. And so, again, maybe possibly trigger warning here, we watch as people pull dead babies out of the rubble. We see like hands and arms being dragged out after they've been blown up. Like this is a very, in many cases, graphic documentary, fly on the wall, no narration whatsoever. Like we are just watching these people try and exist in something that I cannot possibly imagine ever being a part of. So gripping, like it, it, it's, I'm pretty sure that that is the one that's going to probably win. Again, it's of the moment. It's talking about something that's still going on to this day. But be forewarned that if you do decide to watch this, again, uh, both of those, Icarus and Last Men in Aleppo, are on Netflix. It is. It, is, it was hard to, for me to watch. I had to pause it a few times and just get up and walk around because I was getting way too emotional and like, I don't know, viscerally <laughs> affected. So I had to get up and walk around a few times while watching this while watching this movie. Uh, onto the animated shorts. The nominees are Dear Basketball by Glenn Keane and Kobe Bryant. Yes, an Oscar-nominated Kobe Bryant. Garden Party by Victor Kerr and Gabriel Graperon. Lou by Dave Mullins and Dana Murray. Negative Space by Max Porter and Rue Kuowata. And Revolting Rhymes by Jacob Shu and Jan LeCower. So, interestingly enough, this is the category where I have seen every single nominee. So I have seen all five of these short animated features. Short animated movies. The, so the Pixar one is the one called Lou, which is about this lost and found uh, box that goes and tries and grabs stuff and then interacts with a bully that's on the playground. Uh, Garden Party is the is an interesting one because it's following around these animals, these frogs mostly, uh, but other critters in this garden as they discover kind of this this house that we aren't quite sure why it's open 
to nature. There's a pool that doesn't seem to be used. And then we slowly discover why the animals are able to get into the house. I don't want to spoil it because it's actually an interesting reveal at the very end. Dear Basketball is this kind of love letter to basketball. Uh, obviously there because it's with Kobe Bryant as well. Negative Space is all about how this young boy and his father were able to... Um, I don't know, bond over packing <laughs> and, and luggage. And then Revolting Rhymes is this British feature, which is kind of an interesting take on, on nursery rhymes. It was originally written by Roald Dahl, uh, and they've kind of adapted that into this, um, into this short film. I would say, for me personally, that my two favorites are Negative Space and Revolting Rhymes. I think Revolting Rhymes... Uh, it, there's actually two parts to it. It's the first part, part one that's actually been nominated for the Academy Award, and it showed up on the BBC earlier this year. If you just watch part one, which is on Netflix, uh, the way it ends, it, it's very much a cliffhanger, and I just think that that as a piece works so incredibly well. Watch part two as well. It's fun, uh, but it's it, it's an interesting and funny, and it has a bunch of famous British voice actors on it as well. Negative Space... Uh, I hate to even say it this way, but there's a bit of a twist at the end, which kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. Uh, so I think that that, I, I, I'm going to guess, I, I don't know, it's hard to tell in this category. I'm going to guess it's probably going to go to Dear Basketball with Kobe Bryant. That's who I'm going to guess it's going to go to. I wasn't as enamored with that one. Maybe it's just because I just have no love for basketball at all, so it just didn't resonate with me. But I can understand the artistry that is a part of that. And I think if anyone does have a love of that game, that it's going to go a long way. Lou is the Pixar one, but I don't... Pixar usually has a really bad track record, honestly, in the animated short category. It doesn't usually win. It has won a few times in the past, but usually it doesn't. Um, but then, yeah, I, I, this is a toss-up. I think it's either going to go to Dear Basketball, but I do think Revolting Rhymes has a chance as well, just because I think it's a really interesting take on the whole... Uh, uh, nursery rhyme thing. I'm good with words. Uh, finally, we have the animated feature. We have Boss Baby, Why, by Tom McGrath and Ramsey Naito, The Breadwinner by Nora Toomey and Anthony Leo, Coco by Lee Unkrich and Darlette K. Anderson, Ferdinand by Carlos Saldana and Lori Forte, and then Loving Vincent, Corota Cobiella and Hugh Welchman and Ivan McTaggart. Uh, I have only seen Coco in this category. I'm, I'm that person. I've only seen the Pixar movie. That being said, I'm really looking forward to watching Loving Vincent. I think that the animation in there looks gorgeous and beautiful. And that's always a thing. Like, do you honor the best looking animation or you have to honor like the best story? And I think you do have to honor the best story. I was a crying mess in Coco. So I have a big love affair for that movie. The Breadwinner looks amazing as well. Ferdinand, I'm sure, is fine. It's a fine movie, probably. I don't get why Boss Baby is nominated. It looks awful, and everyone who has watched it has also told me that it is awful. So I'm pretty sure Coco is the slam dunk in this case, where it is obviously going to win. But every so often, the Academy likes to throw a curveball at us, and it could go to Loving Vincent. I think that's the only other one that might have a bit of a, a, bit of a foothold into the race, but I'm pretty sure Coco, hands down, is going to win this category. So those are the four categories I'm talking about this week. Have you seen any of these documentaries or documentary shorts, any of the animated features or animated shorts? Let me know what your favorites were down in the comments below, who you think is going to win, who you hope actually does win. And next week, we'll start to jump into uh, some of the other categories. We'll, we'll get into like cinematography and the writing categories and also uh, some of the some of the other stuff until week five where we get into the actors, the directors, and the best picture nominee. But the Academy Awards come up very, very quickly, and uh, hopefully this has helped you out along the way. My name's Kyle. I upload videos usually every Monday and Thursday. This is a weird out of left field one where I'm doing this special series on Saturdays up until the Oscars come out, and then you'll never see me again. <laughs>